I don't think I'll ever have a video where there isn't a cat either just subtly in the corner or running in the background or getting stuck in the closet. Right, Fluffy? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a very highly requested one that has been a long time coming, and it is all the details about mine and Caleb's wedding. So we got married almost three months ago, which is pretty crazy. Our wedding date was June 9th of 2018, and it was absolutely perfect. I literally could not have imagined a better day. Everybody always says that at least one thing goes wrong, or, and usually a big thing, and absolutely nothing went wrong. It was it was literally our dream wedding. It was so beyond perfect. So I wanted to make a video kind of just telling you guys all about the details and how we made our dream wedding a reality. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to kind of go through the things that we did. I'm going to try to do it in order, but I don't totally remember exactly when we made certain decisions and booked certain things. So I'm just going to do my best. And I'm also going to put the wedding video that we had made well the wedding video that we received i guess i'll get into more details but it was actually a surprise for us at the end of this video and if you don't really care about what i'm going to talk about in this video i'll put the timestamp right here of where the wedding video is so i'm one of those girls that's definitely been planning my wedding since i was since forever like as soon as i got the pinterest app and my whole pinterest was just like weddings and just so many different ideas and when Caleb and I got engaged, we got engaged at the end of May in 2017. So we got married almost exactly a year after we got engaged. And a year was more than enough time we felt like to plan the wedding. There was kind of a period of like eight months where we just didn't do anything because we had gotten the big stuff done really early in the beginning. And then we there was stuff we couldn't do until we got a lot closer. So after we got engaged, pretty much the first thing we did was thought about a date and a venue. So originally we really wanted to get married in the fall if you guys know me at all you know i love fall um so we were pretty stuck on a september date and then kind of only a few days later we were just like wait we didn't really want to wait that long to get married um just because like a year and a half seemed like so long and we kind of just wanted to be married so we decided to go with summer instead when we were looking for venues we knew we wanted a rustic venue we did not want to get married in church uh we wanted to get married in a barn specifically something like that and it just worked out perfectly that someone that Caleb and I know were building a barn. They, I think they started building it around the time that we got engaged to do it for wedding, like a wedding venue. And they were building it. It literally is right almost on the same street that my parents live on and that Caleb's dad and stepmom live on. So it was just kind of serendipitous. It, was, it just worked out really well that they were building that and it was going to be ready in the time that we wanted to get married and it was literally right where we grew up so it was super cool so we ended up booking that first and because the venue was so new it was super affordable the most affordable we ever could have asked for so yeah we ended up getting married in a barn i will as i talk about things i'll post pictures on the screen so you can see and also follow me on instagram it's always down below and i post a lot of wedding pictures on there too so yeah the first thing that we did was book the venue so we got this venue it was perfect the location was perfect the price was perfect we were super pumped about it the only thing about it was that it's not huge we didn't want a huge wedding but we definitely had to take that into consideration when building our guest list so i think the next thing that we kind of talked about was people we wanted to invite just kind of general the size of the guest list and also our bridal and groom's party but is it just a bridal party? The wedding party. So then we wanted to talk about the wedding party because we had, honestly, Caleb and I have pretty much been talking about our wedding since we got together. So it wasn't like a big surprise. We both knew that we were going to get married. We just It was just about when, not about if. So we had a kind of an idea of all of these things beforehand, which I think definitely helped with the planning process. So yeah, the next thing that we did was just kind of plan the guest list. I think we invited around 130 or 140 people and we had maybe 117 I think specifically there so it was really perfect for us. We only wanted to invite family and close friends. We didn't want it to be a big a big thing. We wanted only the people that really mattered to be there. I think the next thing that we did was ask our our wedding party. So my wedding party consisted of my sister as my maid of honor. And then I had Caleb's two sisters, who I'm really close with now, and they're, like, amazing. And then my very best friend to this day and all throughout high school and elementary school. One of my best friends also from elementary and high school. And then my very best friend that I met in college. So I had six people, and then Caleb had his best friend kind of from after high school as his best man, my two brothers, and then three of his other friends from high school so it was kind of funny everybody except 
one person, the girl that I met in college, all went to the same high school, just at all different times. Because if you didn't know, Caleb and I grew up in the same town. We just didn't know each other because he's seven years older than me. I'm trying to think of what we did next. We kind of did think some things out of order because there were some things that we weren't sure that we wanted and then we kind of decided last minute that we did. So I guess I'll just kind of talk about things as I think of them because I didn't plan this video out. So our caterer we knew we wanted to have an all vegan wedding obviously it's our wedding day and we weren't about to you know go against our beliefs for the benefit of other people because they wanted meat or whatever it's kind of funny actually we booked our venue totally like sight unseen we saw pictures of it and we we're like all right cool the pictures we saw also they weren't even finished the barn wasn't even done yet and we're like whatever we'll just do it and with our caterer, we did a little bit of research. I found this, this caterer, we went to a tasting. Caleb didn't even come to the tasting because he had to work, so I just went with my parents. And then we booked the caterer. So like we didn't really go outside and like t try a bunch of stuff because we didn't want it to be complicated. We just wanted to find something we liked and go for it. So our caterer was called Parlor Study Vegan, and I also linked their information down below. They're based out of Binghamton, New York, but they travel all over the Finger Lakes, which is super cool because our wedding was almost two hours away from Binghamton, but Caleb and I lived in Binghamton at the time, so it just worked out so well. And our food was so bomb. Like, literally every single one of our wedding guests said that we opened their eyes to a whole new palette because it was so good. So we wanted it to be super, super casual, kind of barbecue buffet style. So we had barbecue seitan ribs, uh, barbecue jackfruit sliders, some mac and cheese, baked beans, greens, and I know they brought some other stuff too, but to be honest, I never got to see the buffet, which is kind of a bummer, but on your wedding day, honestly, you're so busy that you don't always get to enjoy all of the parts of your wedding, which is kind of sad, but whatever. And they ended up bringing us our food. Our caterers also did our dessert, so we decided not to do a traditional wedding cake just because neither of us was really a huge fan of cake. So we did cupcakes instead, which is kind of funny. We never actually got to see the cupcakes either. I only saw them in pictures and then at some point during the night, the cupcakes, all the leftover ones, just ended up on our table. We did a sweetheart table and everyone around us. So at one point in the night, I just looked over and I was like, oh my god, cupcakes. But we did vanilla cupcakes with vanilla frosting and then they did these little like burgundy colored edible flowers on top to match our wedding colors. So that was really, really cool. And what did we book next? Maybe the photographer. So I just want to say that photographer was extremely important to us because obviously that's the only like lasting thing that you get. And you're not going to forget your wedding day, but you still want your pictures to be per perfect. And that's what you'll be able to show your kids and your grandkids and other people. Like, a picture is how you relive the day. So we really wanted to make sure that our photographer was the best that we could find. For our photographers, we found them because they did multiple weddings of people that we know, that we'd seen their pictures on Facebook. And I was like, wow, these are amazing. Who did this? If you've seen my pictures, all of them were done by Trevor and Larkin. They used to be... Uh, Deep Roots Photography and now they're just Larkin and Trevor or Trevor and Larkin one a variation of those photography But they're amazing amazing people amazing photographers. I am literally obsessed with them I will have all their stuff linked down below of course too. I will link all this stuff down below They did our engagement photos which you guys definitely saw a bunch of and then they obviously took all of our wedding photos And they sent us so many photos. They edited all of them obviously I think it was almost 800 pictures that they sent us and they were all amazing and I really, <laughs> I I don't know, I, it, it makes me speechless honestly when I talk about it because my main fear for the year in between getting engaged and getting married and probably before that was hating my wedding photos and I hate getting my picture taken, I absolutely hate it. So I was really really scared that for the rest of eternity I would have to look at these wedding photos that I absolutely hated and I was so so scared about that and when we got our wedding photos back I couldn't believe it I was absolutely in love with them I have never felt more beautiful than I did on the day of my wedding and they just helped that obviously by taking amazing pictures and not only did they take amazing pictures but they surprised us with a wedding video which is the one that I'm going to show at the end of this video so apparently during times that we thought that they were taking pictures they were actually taking videos and we didn't know we decided not to hire a videographer just because it was kind of out of our budget it was a last minute thing that we thought maybe we would pay for if we had leftover money but we would rather pay for really good photos and i'm so glad we didn't pay for someone to make one because they made us a short one and it's it's perfect i love it so much and i hope you guys too like i said timestamp will be right here it's going to play at the end of this video but yeah, we went out to dinner with them just so we could look through the photos together. 
and then they're like oh by the way we have one more surprise for you and they showed us the video and it was so cool because it's i can't remember how long it is maybe a minute or a minute and a half but it was so many just little moments that were so perfect that it's the best way to kind of relive the night and watch the, just the smiles on our faces and the smiles on other people's faces and I just wasn't expecting it so having that little video was just so perfect and I could not thank them enough for doing that for us it was so cool and I I'm really really excited about it so I'm excited to show it to you guys definitely an important part of making our dream wedding having a good photographer so I highly recommend finding a great photographer as your top priority in terms of how much money you're gonna spend so now I guess we'll talk about attire so we picked out the bridesmaids dresses first and those are from david's bridal so they were a one shoulder and they kind of like cinched right here and they were long and the color i can't remember what the name of the color was but it was kind of like a taupe color but it changes depending on what you're standing next to so it was kind of grayish purple tannish pinkish and i loved them i loved them so much and then for my wedding dress i ended up buying two wedding dresses i went shopping for my wedding dress maybe two or three months after we got engaged and i went to david's bridal to try some on and i ended up stupidly buying one that i didn't really like that much because when i was there the woman was like well it's on sale so if you don't buy it now you'll probably never get to buy it so then i panicked and i was like oh my god what if i never find a dress that i like so then i bought it which it wasn't that expensive it was on it was really clearanced so not a big deal i guess but um, I kind of dreaded it after the moment I bought it one because it was non returnable because it was clearance and I just it was everything that I didn't want it was strapless it was tight it was kind of a, a mermaid look or whatever so it just it looked great it just wasn't my style and it wasn't what I was looking for but I just stupidly impulsively went with it and it wasn't until maybe two months or I think it was a month and a half before the wedding I went to get my final fitting with it and my sister came with me and I was like look Kiki I hate this dress we have to, you have to find me a new dress I cannot wear this dress and I was freaking out and Kiki's really good about that kind of stuff so she was just like it's okay we'll find you a new dress we will go everywhere we'll do whatever we have to do we'll find you a new dress so we went like all over and I couldn't find anything so I went online just looked up boho wedding dresses and I found a ton on Lulu's so if you're looking for just a super casual really comfy cheap wedding dress go on Lulu's because they have a million. I never thought that you could just buy your wedding dress online. I don't know why I just had it in my head that you have to go to a bridal boutique, you have to try them on, you have to pick one and it's a big deal. So I ended up ordering three different dresses from Lulu's so I could try them all on. I really liked all of them, but the one that I picked obviously was the perfect one for me. I loved it so much. It cuts really low right here and in the back and it was lace and just super flowy and beautiful it was 90 bucks 90 bucks for my wedding dress and it was everything i could have wanted i i'm obsessed with it i wish i could just wear it every day because i loved it so much i didn't even have to get it altered because it was the perfect length for me it was meant to be so i ended up getting that in the mail probably a month before the wedding which was kind of crazy but it i mean everything happens for a reason it worked out perfectly and then i think it was maybe Two months before the wedding, we decided to order Caleb's suit. So he wore a burgundy, all burgundy suit jacket that actually he didn't wear the jacket. He got the jacket but didn't wear it. So he has the jacket, the vest, and the pants that were burgundy. And then he wore a white collared shirt with this tie that we found that was black and gray roses. Super cool. Last time I checked, the suit that he wore wasn't still on the website. He got it from ASOS. But if I can find it, I'll link it down below. And then for our groomsmen, super simple. We had them wear taupe pants that I think were from JCPenney that perfectly matched the bridesmaids dresses. And I didn't even look at them both and like put them next to each other and have them match. It just really worked out perfectly that they all, that they matched so well. And then they also wore white collared shirts with burgundy bow ties and suspenders. So I loved that. It was perfect. It was, everyone looked great. The colors looked great. It was exactly what I ever could have imagined. So yeah, like I said, our colors were taupe, burgundy, and dark green. So the dark green came in in our flowers. I wore a eucalyptus flower crown, which I've always wanted to wear a flower crown. So it was, it was exactly what I wanted. It looked amazing. And then we had a flower crown, the exact flower crown I wore, but smaller made from our flower girl, which was my niece, Caleb's sister's daughter. And she wore a little the cutest little lace white boho dress and then our nephew was our ring bearer but he didn't really actually do anything <laughs> because we didn't really want to give a three-year-old our wedding rings so he just kind of walked down but he looked super cute he also wore the burgundy bow ties and suspenders with the 
taupe pants and white shirt, so super cute. So in terms of the wedding ceremony, we had one of Caleb's really good friends be our officiant. We didn't want to get a priest or anything like that. Neither of us are religious, and we wanted it to be a little more personal. So we had him do it, and he did a great job. I couldn't have asked for anything better. We also wrote our own vows, which I loved. Both of our, I loved both of our vows. They were really exactly what I wanted them to be. Where the barn was and where the ceremony was, it was kind of a distance. So I had to hide in the barn before I came down. Caleb and I decided to do a traditional first look, I guess. And the first time he saw me was when I walked down the aisle. But because the walk was so long from the barn to the ceremony, we had him turn around and then I walked down from the barn which seriously took forever so everyone was just staring at me and it was the longest walk and then as soon as I hit the first row of chairs Caleb's best man tapped him on the shoulder and he turned around and we saw each other and then I finished walking down so that was really cool that photographers were able to get pictures of him actually like turning around and seeing me and I love those pictures so much and our ceremony was super short and sweet we ended up just having his name was Michael who we had to our wedding so he just did his own little speech thing and then I chose someone to read some song lyrics and then Caleb chose someone to read a poem that he picked out. I chose my mom's best friend who's kind of like my second mom and then Caleb chose his godfather and his uncle. And then we just read our vows, exchanged rings and went on our way. Our ceremony I think was only 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Honestly, it was super short and exactly what I wanted. We did the traditional first dance and mother-son dance and father-daughter dance. Uh, Caleb and I danced to Hold You In My Arms by Ray LaMontagne, which was way too long. Don't dance to it, or if you're gonna dance to it, cut it down to like two minutes because it's a five minute long song and we were miserable because it was so long and awkward and we hated it. And Caleb and his mom danced to What A Wonderful World by uh, Louis Armstrong. And then my dad and I danced to California Dreamin' by Mamas and the Papas. And we didn't do a slow dance. We actually like boogie down and it was super fun because we just didn't feel like slow dancing. We wanted to make it a little more fun. So that was really awesome. And then we did the traditional maid of honor speech, best man speech, and then my dad made a speech. All of them made me cry. They were perfect. And then we really just like danced for the rest of the night. In terms of music, we had my brother be the DJ because he really wanted to and he's really good at it. I know I've talked about it before, but he actually has his own music on iTunes. He's a rapper and he's freaking sweet. He writes all of his own music and every time I listen to it, I'm like, why are you so talented and I'm not because he's my twin so he like got all the talent and I got nothing so I will link all of his music down below too. definitely check him out because he's freaking awesome his name's Tanner and he's just the bomb wow that was embarrassing why did I just do that oh I guess the decor so I forgot to talk about that we wanted something really simple we wanted to pretty much do it yourself for everything so the green also came in for the decorations, so for the centerpieces, Caleb's dad made us wood slabs for all of the middle of the tables, and then we did a big mason jar with, with baby's breath in it, a really tiny mason jar with um, battery powered tea light candles, and then we had these little wood table number holders with the table numbers in them. I bought the table number holders and the table numbers, so if I can find those, they were on Etsy, I'll link those down below. In terms of the other flowers, one of um, my family's close friends do, has a flower shop, so she did our flowers. The bouquets were kind of like a lot of foliage. We had green flowers, eucalyptus, and then we had some peonies that were supposed to be white, but they ended up pink, which was fine. It kind of freaked me out in the like the morning of the wedding. I was like, oh my god, no, pink flowers, but they ended up looking really pretty. And then there were some other like burgundy flowers in there and stuff too. It looked super cool, and then the boys wore green foliage boutonnieres, and um, the bridesmaids bouquets were the exact same as mine they were just a bit smaller so mine was bigger oh i should show you i really wanted to preserve my bouquet so i ended up getting a shadow box because i really wanted to do those like flowers pressed between two pieces of glass but my bouquet was really thick and the flowers were really big and they wouldn't dry out enough so i ended up trying this which i got a, a shadow box and then instead of putting the flowers in the back of the shadow box and pinning them i flipped around the pieces so this piece that's supposed to go before this piece i put it after and then caleb screwed them in because they were a little like too thick to close all the way but yeah so obviously this wasn't my entire bouquet but it was some of the flowers that i really liked and I love it so much. I think it's super cool and I'm really glad I get to keep this forever. I also have my flower crown and Kiehl's boutonniere that are dried that are just hanging on a window or a mirror out there. So 
We also had some little decorations around, like for our card box, we used this vintage suitcase that is used as a decoration item at the restaurant that both of us worked at where we met. So that was really cool. And then I printed up our own welcome sign and seating chart with like a cool font that I really, really liked. And we just had two tables, one for the guest book and one for uh, gifts and cards that were just kind of decorated with random stuff that we found. We also decided to do a non-traditional guest book and instead we found this massive mason jar at Michael's. I should go grab it. Put out um, index cards and then people just wrote their notes on index cards and put it in here. So we have this just on a bookshelf. I think it makes kind of a cool decoration piece now for our apartment and it just worked out well. We didn't want to do just a book or anything. So I really, really love this idea. The cool thing about the barn is it already came with all of those Christmas lights up. So that just looked really cool. It made the barn not even need a ton of decorations because the Christmas lights and the other random lights just made it look so, so pretty. And then there were also um, some tiny succulents around that they'd already put up on the windows. So that was really pretty too. For the ceremony, we got this really big roll of burlap for the aisle runner. Uh, I got that on Oriental Trading, I think. And then we put white flower petals down the sides, which I bought 5,000 of them, and they did not cover nearly as much as I wanted, but it still looked really nice. And we didn't decorate the arch at all. We left it just completely plain wood, and they had the arch already at the venue, so that worked out really perfect. We just rented simple tables and chairs. For jewelry, I didn't wear any jewelry at all. I wore some just like silver studs that I already owned from Forever 21, but because I knew my hair was gonna be all messy and down, it didn't really matter, and I'm not a big jewelry person, so I didn't buy any jewelry. I was barefoot the entire night. I didn't even bring, <laughs> I didn't even bring shoes, which is kind of dumb, because at the end of the night when I had to walk across the gravel driveway, it kind of hurt, but yeah, I was barefoot for the entire night, which is exactly what I wanted. For my makeup, I definitely talked about this in a vlog before, but I did a makeup trial and I absolutely hated it, so I ended up firing her and doing my own makeup, which I should have started with in the first place. I don't know why I thought that I would be okay with someone else doing my makeup, because I told her really natural and simple. It was not natural and simple, and I don't, obviously I don't wear a ton of makeup, so my makeup on my wedding day was a little bit more than this, but not much. I am going to do a bridal makeup tutorial exactly of what I did and all the products that I used in a video coming up soon so be on the lookout for that and then I had one of my sister's friends do my hair which was super affordable she only charged a dollar a minute so it was only I think fifty dollars and then with the tip so super affordable and she just kind of pinned it up in the back with a shit ton of bobby pins and then curled these pieces that just kind of fell down so exactly what i wanted for my hair it really was everything was exactly what i wanted i looked really tan because i fake tanned a ton i used the luna bronze i think it's called i'll put a picture right here but that's what i used and it worked out really really well for that day oh and drinks we ended up we did an open bar but we only did beer and wine so that was super easy kelb and i don't drink obviously that we've talked about that but everybody else did and they enjoyed it we toasted at our wedding with gt's kombucha the trilogy kind so there's some funny pictures of that and that's exactly what we wanted to do so that was really fun and i think that's it honestly all of those details made the wedding so perfect like i said i will link everything that I talked about down below that I possibly can so if you're interested in any of it buy it use it for your wedding let me know how much you loved it because it made our day so perfect and now I'm just gonna play the wedding video and then have the video be done so thank you so much for watching keep watching for the wedding video don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye